Good morning and welcome. Today's video is all about repurposing those grain or feed bags that you get. And most of the time people just throw these away, but they're really nice, almost like a tarp material. It's waterproof. Um, it's really heavy duty and durable. So I'm gonna make um, myself an apron with this chicken scratch bag. It's got that pretty chicken picture on it. And then with this one, I'm gonna make a tote bag. And I'm gonna line the tote bag and the apron with this really pretty um, bandana type fabric that I picked up at Walmart. There's two yards here. And I'm gonna make straps um, for my apron out of this. But this is just a good way to repurpose those um, feed bags. I know like dog food comes in these bags, um, horse, goat, chicken, whatever. And instead of throwing it out, I've always tried to save them and make um, tote bags, but I was thinking I really need an apron that will stay waterproof when I'm washing greens or washing my big can and pots. I always end up getting soaked. So I thought this would be perfect to make an apron out of. So stay with me and we'll get these cut apart and I'll show you how easy and fast it is to make an apron and a tote bag. Now the great big bags are perfect to make big totes and you just keep those in your car. And if you go to the beach or the pool or the lake or wherever and you've got wet towels and wet swimsuits, you just drop them in a tote bag made out of this and it doesn't get your car wet, and it stays, um, it doesn't ruin the bag. So, save those bags. If anybody out there has a goat bag, ooh, I'd like to have one of those because I'd love to make a tote bag out of a, one of the goat feed bags. So anyway, stay tuned. We're gonna start cutting this apart, and I'll show you how easy it is to make. Okay, the first step is to cut the bottom of the bag off. So just take a pair of scissors and cut that off. And then you're gonna turn the bag over and go right up the middle. We want one really large piece for this project. Then just open it up. Now it is dusty. This had corn scratch in it. So you'll need to take a soapy rag and just kind of wipe that down and get all that dust off. And then we're going to um, use an apron that I already had as my pattern. So I've laid it out and I've kind of centered that chicken where I want it on the front of my apron. And then just with the Sharpie, I'm just going around and tracing out the apron. Now, if you have a different kind of apron pattern, um, like you purchase at a store, Simplicity or another type of pattern, you could certainly use that. I liked this apron, so I thought I'll just lay it on here and draw it out. Then the next step is just to take the scissors and cut out the panel. Now I'll need to square up that bottom, so I'll once I get it cut out, I'll fold it and kind of make that um, a better cut. When you're cutting the bottom of the bag, it's kind of gathered and it's hard to get it exactly straight. So you can go back and straighten it later. So I'm just gonna fold this in half. And this is such great um, material to work with. And then just cut again to straighten it out and get everything nice and even. Now you can see I've got the chicken kind of right in the middle of the bag. Now, I want to line this or put a backing on it, so I've just laid my pattern piece on top of the um, bandana fabric, and I'm going around with the ruler and just measuring two inches all the way around. Because I want to be able to fold this over to the front and kind of make a pretty border all the way around the um, apron. Just holding it in place and going around. And now I'm going to go and cut on my mark that I made two inches all the way around the apron. 
and that's why I liked this apron because it's such an easy pattern you don't have to worry about sewing it the two pieces together and turning and and all of that we're just going to wrap that around to the front okay we're ready to start pinning so I've got the bottom already pinned and I'm going to go up the side and I'll show you how easy it is to do a corner you just fold it kind of make a point there then take and fold it in half and then fold it over again and pin it in place it has a nice point um, there on the ends so I went all the way around and pinned um, the backing to the front and it just looks really pretty kind of makes it pop that bandana fabric now when you get around to the um, circular part I did have to go back and trim some of this off and then I went and made little slits so that it would fold over easier so there I am just making very short slits so that it will go around the rounded edges a little better so around the um, sides there it is going to be a little bit smaller but it just looks so much better when I trimmed it and it seemed to lay flatter better and I was able to pin it in place without any wrinkles in the fabric so this process is a little time consuming but you want it to look nice so I just took my time and went around and made sure everything was folded over and pinned in place this is going to be such a nice apron because whenever I can or I'm washing up a lot of big pots I always get soaked so I'm real excited about having this you know when I'm doing corn putting up corn in the freezer or canning I can wear this and, and really not worry about get, getting my clothes all wet. All right, so I'm going all the way around, pinning it in place, just about finished, and then we'll start sewing. Now, when you um, are sewing this, I highly recommend you use a jean needle that's brand new, nice and sharp to get through this bag and the material. All right, there it is, ready to be sewn there's the back it can be reversible so let's turn it around and get on that sewing machine and get to sewing I used a decorative kind of like a little ivy stitch to go all the way around this and make it look really pretty I just took my time pulling out the pins as I sewed along and again I recommend a really good heavy-duty needle and we did all the corners and we're done now I had cut out and sewed up some ties and then a strap that goes around the neck and I sewed those in place here are the two small ties that I, um, I measured the other apron um, their ties and then cut these out to size and I'm just going to pin these in place and just do a quick um, back and forth stitch to hold it in place on each side and then the next strap I measured my apron pattern and then I cut it out and sewed it together and now I have it pinned in place and I tried it on to make sure it fit nicely before I sewed it So I sewed the neck strap in the two ties in place, and then we're done. Ta-da! Here is the finished apron. It's long enough to keep me from getting soaked. I think it turned out pretty neat. I was real excited. Now let's move on to the tote bag. So the same step as before, I'm going to cut off the bottom, but that's the only thing I'm going to cut. I don't cut the back open we're just going to leave it just like this and what I'm going to do is kind of square up the top and then we're going to turn it inside out now you can use any size bag to make totes um, this is a nice small one I can toss some books in or 
some of my supplies when I'm outside and just carry it around with me. Now I'm wiping it down again and I'm getting it centered in place, making sure that I've got it right side up. Then I'm gonna go back and sew a stitch across the bottom. But first I'm gonna cut out my lining. So I lay down the tote bag on top of the lining and at the top of my tote bag, I wanna leave, leave about two inches um, so that I can fold that down over the tote bag. So add two inches to the top of the lining, but leave the sides the same because you want it the same size as your bag. And then we're just gonna cut that out. And I will stitch um, two sides on the lining, the bottom and the side, and I'll leave the top open. Now there's enough there on the side that I can make two handles. So I haven't even used the whole two yards of fabric on these two projects. Now to make handles, I just take it, the fabric, fold it in half, and then I'm gonna stitch across the both ends and across one side, leaving about a three inch gap right in the middle of that long seam. And then that's where I'm going to turn it. After I've sewed it, I snip off all my threads and kind of cut the corners a little bit so they'll fold over easily when we turn it. Then go into the, the middle there and turn it. It's just easier this way. And then using a pencil, I just push it through and both ends look nice and finished. Now I'll go back and sew all the way around this to catch that hole that is in the handle. I'm going to press them really nice. Now usually when I make tote bags I do add some fabric stiffener um, for these handles but because this is tote bag is going to be used out in my greenhouse I just didn't put the fabric stiffener inside. So I'm just going to press it and then stitch all the way around. Now, this is a little tricky part, but you've sewed the bottom and the side. You grab your ends and you kind of fold them like this. This is how we're going to make the base of our bag. I wanted a wide base bag, so I'm going to go up four inches up that seam line and mark. And then just draw a straight line across. That'll be our seam line. And I'll do some more videos on tote bags. I make a lot of tote bags. Um, but then you're just going to see how I've made the two points go up four inches, make a dot, and then draw a line all the way across. And that is going to be our seam line. And I'm gonna sew both across those lines and that will make a nice flat bottom bag. I'm gonna pin this in place so it doesn't shift when I sew. Now I did the same thing for the white bag over there. I folded those ends up, marked four inches, and then sewed across the seam line. Just like that. So we've got a nice bottom bag. I turned it, and I hot glued those two flaps down so they'd lay flat. And then we're going to put our lining in, wrong sides together, and then finish up the tote bag. So just tuck it in and you push it down all the way to the bottom, making sure your points are nice and straight down underneath. And you have to kind of lay it down, push, push, and then you start, see how nice and it fits in there so nicely because it's all the same size. Then we're going to fold the edge down a couple of times and then pin it in place. That's all there is to it. Okay, I just went around the entire bag, folding and pinning in place, smoothing out any wrinkles, and just getting it ready to sew. 
And the same step before, I just sewed all the way around the edge, pulled out the pins as I go. And it just made a really great tote bag. It's so much fun. I like to take um, the arm off my machine. It just works better. I just sewed a regular straight stitch all the way around the tote bag. This is the finished product. I added handles to the back side of the tote bag and it's all done. Just a cute little fun bag. I could carry my tools around in it when I'm working out in the garden. Um, I could carry books in there if I need to go off, whatever. It's just a fun little bag and a great way to repurpose those bags. Very heavy duty. It's going to be really hard to rip that bag. So I hope you enjoyed this video and you got some ideas on how to use those feed bags. It's a lot of fun. So save those bags, repurpose them, don't put them in the trash. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this fun little feeling frugal video. Please like and subscribe and share it with someone that you know would love to make one of these. Have a very blessed day.